Hi, and welcome to this episode of Things That Matter. I'm Brian Broderson, and it's great to be with you today. And I'm, uh, I'm really excited to have my friend, uh, Dr. Joe Holden, here in the studio with me. And Joe is the president of Veritas Evangelical Seminary. Joe, welcome. Thanks, Brian, for having me. It's good yeah. to be here with you. Yeah. So, Joe, you are not only the president of the seminary, but Along with Dr. Norman Geisler, you're really the founder of the seminary. Yes, we both had a vision of bringing to the West Coast a seminary that focused on evangelism and defending the faith. And our hearts met in seminary when I was attending back east at his first school he planted at Southern Evangelical Seminary. And this was the place we wanted to be because of the proliferation of uh, liberal ideas and and what was happening to the scriptures. In California, like liberal, you mean? It yeah, <laughs> can you believe it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a wonderful opportunity to plan a seminary right here in the heart of Southern yeah. California, here in Santa Ana, and we're now in our ninth year ninth of year. educating students. Yeah. Amazing, that is amazing. So Joe, you, uh, I met you when you were uh, a younger man, um, <laughs> and you, you actually went through um, a Bible College Extension campus that we used to host at the church I was pastoring in uh, North San Diego County yeah. in Vista. And then, you know, you kind of just kept going. What, what yeah. was what was driving you um, there? You know, yeah. What did, did you come into Bible college knowing eventually I want to I want to get my PhD? I want to I want to be in a you know seminary. I want to be, or or did it just kind of develop as you went? That's a good question. And the time in which I went to the Calvary Bible College in Vista was a time that was a rock bottom in my life because mm -hmm. I had just come back from Mexico playing professional baseball. I had no more options open. I still hadn't finished my, ma my bachelor's degree mm -hmm. from my undergraduate work. So uh, I keep hearing this advertisement on the radio <laughs> that to complete your degree with Calvary Chapel Bible College. And so I was very reserved at first and then my mom kept pushing me yeah. to uh, get over there and get signed up and finish what you started. And so I did. So that was the last place I really wanted to be. Uh, <laughs> well, <but laughs> gee, that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but by the end of my education there, a couple years later, it was yeah. the first on my priority. And then I couldn't get enough. The classes were just so rich with the teaching of the word. God got a hold of my heart. And I said, I have to have more of this. And just went on, continued on through, yeah. through school after that in yeah. seminary. Yeah. So your seminary experience uh, at Southern Seminary with Dr. Geisler and yes. all of that, um, that now, you know, I mean, you, you, you know me, I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. Calvary Chapel, you know a ton of Calvary Chapel pastors. Right. Did, did you ever aspire toward being a pastor or was it always more, you felt more drawn toward the, the higher education thing? Well, it's interesting. I wanted to have nothing to do with public speaking at all. <laughs> that was my biggest fear. <laughs> Spiders and public speaking are uh, the things I wanted to stay away from the most. But it seems like the Lord continued to push me into these places where I didn't want to go. And, you know, I woke up one morning and said, you know what, if I don't act upon these opportunities that God has given me, then I have nothing to complain about. Yeah. You know, so I took the, the step of faith and started to stretch myself in the public speaking and getting through public speaking classes and little opportunities I got at the church. Wait, were, you and so just, forth. were you just shy? But what, what, what I think it? so. I was more reserved. Uh, yeah. It was just, uh, you know, baseball and that was it. <laughs> you know, it was a one track mind. Yeah. But God was stretching me during that time. So, no, I didn't plan on doing anything with speaking. Yeah. Um, but the more and more I studied the word, I figured that it wasn't necessarily a fear of speaking. It was just that I didn't have a message to give. Yeah. And so at that point, God really got a hold of my heart, mm -hmm. you know, filled my heart with a message of his word, yeah. of his son, Jesus. And that's what opened my mouth for Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's what got me moving. Yeah. There was just nothing worthwhile to talk about <laughs> yeah. in my book. But yeah. But with that message. That's great. From, from a, from a <laughs> sort of sounds like a quiet, maybe non-communicative baseball player to <laughs> being the president of a seminary. That's a, that's a pretty good God story right there. Yeah, that is. It's yeah. a very unlikely uh, outcome from where I was. And, you know, Joe, of course, you also teach at Calvary Chapel Bible College. Yes. Um, your, your class is always one of the favorites of the students. They oh. absolutely love it. 
um, I hear nothing but great mm. uh, praise. My daughter, you know, when she attended the school, she your class was one of her favorites. Oh. Yeah. Well, great. Well, it, boy, I learn something every class. Yeah. And, you know, those great questions that the students always have yeah. always stretch us and, and push us along and increase yeah. our, our, yeah. our knowledge. So, Joe, you're not, you're not just the, the president of the seminary. You're also an author. You've mm -hmm. authored a number of books. Yeah. Um, what, what's, your, what's really your passion? Um, I mean, obviously, education is your passion and so forth. Mm -hmm. But is there... Is there an area that you feel like, man, this is, you know, if there's any area of theology that I'm super passionate about, this is the area. Mm -hmm. Bibliology, it would be the study of the nature and character of the Bible. Yeah. The inspiration, the inerrancy, the transmission, the translation, and all objections to it yeah. as well. So yeah. I think it all revives, re revolves around the Word of God. If that question isn't answered, yeah. then we're left to our own opinions and yeah. different crazy thoughts about who God is and so forth. Yeah. So it's got to be the Bible. That's where the rubber meets the rose, James yeah. Everton McGee would say. Yeah, and that that's an ongoing battle, isn't it? It is. I it mean, it's like really every is. generation has to fight that battle to some degree or another. That's right. Because there are always those out there that want to say, well, yeah, I know the text says this, but let me tell you, you know, why it doesn't really mean that. Sure. And, you know, we, we think it actually probably should mean this. Yes. And one of my professors in seminary once told me that, you know, the price of orthodoxy is eternal vigilance. Yeah. In other words, well, you good. need to be able to wage a battle for the Bible every generation. Yeah. Because the last generation, we had Harold Lenzel, we had Norman Geisler, uh, we had J. Gresham Mason, we had Carl Henry. We had all these uh, giants of the faith that were defending the scriptures from liberal attack. But even now today, much of the battle is not only coming from the outside, yeah. it's also being waged from within mm -hmm. because many of the New Testament scholars today within the Christian world are changing the way they view their doctrine of scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, before there was no errors, but now there's just a few errors. Mm -hmm. You know, so once you let that yeah. uh, stand, yeah. then... Yeah, it's, it's it, a it, it really is a slippery slope, and, I, and I've said this before in response to that sort of thing, especially in regard to the, the academic approach and, and all of that. I've, I've thought, you know, oftentimes, unfortunately, with the, with the you know, the theologian, the professor or whatever, what they're not, they're not, they don't think pastorally, mm -hmm. you know, so they, right. don't, they don't sometimes, I think, get the fact that, you know, you throw out this little seed of doubt Mm -hmm. And there is a devil, and he will take that little seed of doubt, and he will, you know, try to, he'll try to produce uh, ultimately unbelief in the mind of a person. That's right. And I, I think sometimes I often felt as a pastor that the, these guys, if they understood that, they might be a little more careful, you know, with uh, so true. what they what they say about about some of these things. You That's know? true. I mean, if we're studying it from an academic perspective, yeah. day in and day out, 100% of the time, yeah. and we're not bringing in the relational aspect to yeah. what the words say from Scripture, yeah. then we're really setting ourselves up for failure in large part. Yeah. Um, you know that most of the pastors in Calvary Chapel have not gone through seminary. Mm -hmm. um, some have, yeah. of course, but, but I would say the majority probably have right. not. Um, what do you see as the... Um, either disadvantages or advantages of seminary? Well, that's a good question, Brian. You know, it, it all depends on which seminary you go to. Yeah. A seminary could be a cemetery after too long, or it could be something that really is a, a vital part of your ministry tool. Yeah. Uh, it gives you a toolbox to grab from to just improve and accentuate all the ministry that you're already doing. Yeah. Because what I've found is, Pastors are very well read and they love their Bible, especially in the Calvary Chapel tradition. And I think that uh, when they realize that the world has good questions, but Christianity or Christians have good answers to it. And those answers are rooted in scripture. And so if we can come alongside to build up what they already have yeah. and to be an aid to them, it's just gonna make their ministry all the better. Yeah. And the effectiveness of that ministry is gonna be yeah. seen far and wide. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you know, there, there are some that would even say, and I've, I've heard this, I've had these conversations yeah. with guys, um, you know, that are very critical of seminary, very critical yeah. of sort of higher education. And, mm -hmm. and even, you know, in my relationship to you and the seminary and all, people have sort of questioned me, right. well, you know, why are you doing that? I mean, that's mm -hmm. not who we are and we don't need that. Yeah. And, I've, and I've often responded with, well, you know, the truth of the matter is, even though we, sometimes we don't even think this, we do depend on scholars. Yeah. I have a library with a lot of books in it, and many of those books are written by scholars, That's guys right. like yourself who have done, you know, the research and have really got down and, um, you know, uncovered the facts and so forth. And, and I depend on that. That's so right. that's that's a that's a resource that I am dependent on. And I think sometimes guys just kind of forget that. Yeah. So yeah. in my mind, if we don't have seminaries and if we don't have good seminaries and we don't, if we don't have a new generation of scholars coming along, uh, eventually that's going to come down to us. It's going right. to hurt us in the long run. It really will. So. I mean, Jay Gresham Mason said seminaries have largely become the nurseries of unbelief. Yeah. And in many cases they have. I think of one seminary here in Pasadena that, you know, started correct and then rolled over got rid of their doctrine of Scripture, got rid of the inerrancy of Scripture, and the rest is history. Um, but it's important to realize, especially for pastors, that our knowledge doesn't come out of a vacuum. Uh, the Holy Spirit can draw upon the knowledge that He's placed in you through the rigorous study of the Word, and He can pull it out when He wants to. Yeah. But we got to put it in as well. And the Spirit can help us do that. A good seminary can help us do that. But it's important to remember that God asks us to reason together with Him. You know, Isaiah makes that very clear. Uh, the New Testament, worship the Lord with all of your mind is one of the statements there. Yeah. Uh, we need to be careful to keep all of our ideas to the subjectivity or captivity of Christ. Yeah. You know, we need to bring our minds to Him. Ideas are very powerful things, either yes. for good or bad. Yeah. I mean, we think of Hitler in World War II had some bad ideas. We think of Jesus having great ideas bringing people to Him. Yeah. So C.S. Lewis said it best. He said, ideas have consequences, and yeah. they really do. Yeah. And he said, good ideas must exist for no other reason than to refute bad ideas, yeah. you know, minimally. Yeah. So yeah. ideas are very important. Yeah. So at Veritas, in, in closing, what's the... Um, what, what do you guys have a I mean I know inerrancy is a huge part of the vision of the seminary yeah. is would you say that that is kind of the the heartbeat yes I would say the scriptures and from that e emerge the inspiration and inerrancy of scripture yeah because once you allow one mistake in scripture you know there could be a million other ones too yeah who's and to say where it stops who's to say where it stops once that foot ends in the door it's yeah. hard to get out yeah yeah so um, your book that you wrote a couple years back on um, has a lot of archaeology stuff in it, has yes. a lot of bibliology stuff in it. What's, mm -hmm. what's the name of that book? Yes, The Popular Handbook to Archaeology in the Bible. Yeah, that is a great book. I really enjoyed writing that, Brian. Yeah. You know, I have a passion for archaeology. Yeah. I mean, all those artifacts we have in this book with great yeah. pictures yeah. are just linking scriptures yeah. to and the I, real and world. And I've, I've, you know, making my way through it, and I am just really impressed with the the job that you did and oh, and then you. I'm also impressed that I have a friend that's so smart oh <laughs> <laughs> no just ask my wife she'll probably disagree with you <laughs> Jill thanks so yeah, much thanks so much Brian, how for can um, how can people get in touch with you with the seminary sure yes they can uh, either uh, email me uh, jholden at ves.edu or they can just log on to our website at ves.edu yeah Great. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, hope you've enjoyed uh, this episode. Uh, great to have Dr. Joe Holden here in the studio. Um, look forward to being together with you again soon. And remember just to, if you've been blessed by what you hear today, get the word out, use all the social media avenues and so forth. And um, we'll be back again for another episode of Things That Matter.